I think that you could have a much simpler and cheaper way where you have a version of the internet that's running in a huge sandbox someplace that's closed off from the rest of the internet and another version of the internet that's closed off from everything else as well. And you can run on a parallel path as it is with this agent and you can easily, in my opinion, actually figure out whether this agent is good or bad and you can probably do it in weeks. So I actually think the approvals are actually not that complicated. And the reason to do it here is because I get that it may cause a little bit more friction for some of these mom and pops. But if you think about what's the societal and consequences of letting the worst case outcomes happen, the AGI type outcomes happen, I think those are so bad. They're worth slowing some folks down. And I think like, just because you want to, you know, buy groceries for $100, you should be able to do it. I get it. But if people don't realize and connect the dots between that and bringing airplanes down, then that's because they don't understand what this is capable of. I'm not saying we're never going to need regulation. What I'm saying is it's way too early. We don't even know what we're okay, regulating. We, we don't know what the standard would be. And what we will do by racing to create a new FDA is destroying American innovation in the sector. And other countries will not slow down. They will beat us to the punch here. Got it. I think there's a middle ground here of self-regulation and thoughtfulness on the part of the people who are providing these tools at scale to give just but one example here. And this tweet is from five minutes ago. So to look at the pace of this, five minutes ago, this tweet came out. A developer who is an AI developer says, AI agents continue to amaze. My GPT-4 coding assistant learned how to build apps with authenticated users that can build and design a web app, create a backend, handle auth logins, upload code to GitHub, and deploy. He literally, while we were talking, is deploying websites. Now, if this website was a phishing app uh, or the one that Chamath is talking about, he could make a gazillion different versions of Bank of, of America, Wells Fargo, et cetera, then find everybody on the internet's email, then start sending different spoofing emails, determine which spoofing emails work, iterate on those, and create a global financial collapse. Now, this sounds insane, <laughs> but it's happening right now. People get hacked every day at one, two, three percent. Sachs, fraud is occurring right now in the low single digit percentages, identity theft is happening in the low single identity right. percentages. Th this technology is moving so fast that bad actors could 10x that relatively easy. Yeah, and so if 10% of us want to be hacked and have our credit cards hacked, this could create chaos. I think self regulation is the solution. I'm the one who brought up self regulation. What I said, no, is I brought that it up first. I brought it up first. I get credit. No, go ahead. I'm not, it's not about credit. I'm no self-regulation. I is never got to finish my Chat point GPT about it because you interrupted me. Well, you talked me. for eight minutes. So if you have a point to make, you should have got it in the eight minutes. Oh my God. You guys kept interrupting me. Go ahead. What I said is that there are trust and safety teams at these big AI companies, these big foundation model companies like OpenAI. Like I said, in the past, trust and safety has been a euphemism for censorship. And that's why people don't trust it. But I think it would be appropriate for these platform companies to apply some guardrails on how their tools can be used. And based on everything I know, they're doing that. So and this guy you guys, just released you guys websites are, are to the open web with ChatGP4, and he's going to have it do it automated. You're basically postulating capabilities that don't yet exist. I just are, tweeted the guy's doing it. He's got a video of himself doing it on the web. What do you think, Freebird? That's a far cry from basically running like some phishing expedition that's going to bring down the entire banking system. A literally a phishing, a phishing site and a site with OAuth are the same thing. Go ahead, Freeberg. I think that that guy is doing something illegal if he's hacking into computers, uh, into people's emails and bank accounts. That's illegal. You're not allowed to do that. And so that action breaks the law. That person can be prosecuted for doing that. The tooling that one might use to do that can be used in a lot of different ways, just like you could use Microsoft Word to forge letters, just like you could use Microsoft Excel to create fraudulent financial statements. I think that the application of a platform technology needs to be distinguished from the technology itself. And while we all feel extraordinarily fearful because the unbelievable leverage that these AI tools provide, again, I'll, I'll remind you that this chat GPT-4 or this GPT-4 model by some estimates, is call it a few terabytes. You could store it on a hard drive or you could store it on your iPhone and you could then go run it on any set of servers that you could go set up physically anywhere. So, you know, it's a little bit naive to say we can go ahead and, you know, 
regulate platforms and we can go regulate the tools, certainly we should continue to enforce and protect ourselves a- against nefarious actors using, you know, new tools in, in inappropriate and illegal ways. You know, I, I also think that there's a moment here that we should all kind of observe just how quickly we want to shut things down when, you know, they take away what feels like the the control that we all have from one day to the next. And, you know, that the, the, the real si- kind of sense of fear that seems to be quite contagious for a large number of people that have significant assets or significant things to lose is that, uh, you know, tooling that's, that's, you know, creating entirely newly disruptive systems and models for business and, and economics and opportunity for so many needs to be regulated away to minimize, you know, what we claim to be some potential downside when we already have laws that protect us uh, on the other side. So, you know, I just kind of want to also consider that this set of tools creates extraordinary opportunity. We gave one sort of simple example about the opportunity for creators, but we talked about how new business models, new businesses can be started with one or two people. You know, entirely new tools can be built with a handful of people, uh, entirely new businesses. This is an incredible economic opportunity. And again, if the U.S. tries to regulate it or the U.S. tries to come in and stop the application of models in general or regulate models in general, you're certainly going to see those models of continue to evolve and continue to be utilized in very powerful ways that are going to be advantageous to places right. outside the U.S. There's over 180 countries on Earth. They're not all going to regulate together. It's been hard enough to get any sort of coordination around financial systems, to get coordination around climate change, to get coordination around anything on a global basis, to try and get coordination around the, the software models that are being developed, I think is is pretty naive. You don't want to have a global organization. I think you need to have a domestic organization that protects US. And I think Europe will have their own. They, again, FDA versus EMA. Canada has its own. Japan has its own. China has its own. And they, they have a lot of overlap and a lot of commonality in, in the guardrails they use. And I think that's what's going to happen here. This will be beneficial only for political insiders who will basically be able to get their projects and their apps approved with a huge dead weight loss for the system because innovation will completely slow down. But let me build on Freeberg's point, which is that we have to remember that AI won't just be used by nefarious actors. It'll be used by positive actors. So there will be new tools that law enforcement will be able to use. And if somebody's creating phishing sites at scale, they're going to be probably pretty easy for, you know, law enforcement AIs to detect. So let's not forget that there'll be co-pilots written for our law enforcement authorities. They'll be able to use that to basically detect and fight crime. And a really good example of this was in the crypto space. We saw this article over the past week that Chainalysis has figured out how to basically track, you know, illicit Bitcoin transactions. And there's now a huge number of prosecutions that are happening of illegal use of Bitcoin. And if you go back to when Bitcoin first took off, there was a lot of conversations around Silk Road. And the only thing that Bitcoin was good for was basically illegal transactions, blackmailing, uh, drug trafficking. And therefore, we had to stop Bitcoin. Remember, that was the main argument. And the counter argument was that, well, no, Bitcoin, like any technology can be used for good or bad. However, there will be technologies that spring up to combat those nefarious or illicit use cases. And sure enough, you had a company like Chainalysis come along, and now it's been used by law enforcement to basically crack down on the illicit use of Bitcoin. And if anything, it's cleaned up the Bitcoin community tremendously. And I think it's dispelled this idea that the only thing you'd use Bitcoin for is black market transactions. Quite the contrary. I think you'd be really stupid now to use Bitcoin in that way. It's actually turned Bitcoin into something of a honeypot now, because if you used it for nefarious transactions, your transactions record in the blockchain forever, just waiting for chain analysis to find it. So again, using Bitcoin to do something illegal would be really stupid. I think in a similar way, you're going to see self-regulation by these major AI platform companies combined with new tools that are used, new AI tools that spring up to help combat the nefarious uses. And until we let those forces play out, I'm not saying regulate never. I'm just saying we need to let those forces play out before we leap to creating some new regulatory body that doesn't even understand what its mandated mission is supposed to be.